pick the most valuable. You seem like a lovable guy. <laughs> All right, so how did you acquire this? You bought it. Why is you being married in 1960 important? We bought that in about 1961 or 62. Also, you're splurging right out of the chute. <laughs> you're like, I'm married and I'm going to buy something beautiful for the house. And I'm not getting any of that American, I'm not getting any of that, like, you know, low quality crap. I'm buying Tiffany. Huh. What did your wife say? She really wanted it, and you really wanted to make sure that she got what she really wanted, exactly. right? Have you maintained that goal? Have you been doing that for the last how many years? Pretty, pretty well. well, you got to ask her that, <laughs> right? She, you're happy, you look good. God love you, everything's good, healthy, and the kids and everything. So you bought this. You bought this. I'm making two faces. I'm making a face right here at this. See that? That's where I'm making a face. And right here, I'm making a face down here too, right at that. Okay? Yeah. Always like that when you bought it? You don't remember it changing? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this particular piece is marked LC Tiffany. There's a number which indicates how old it is. Yeah. And then it says Favril, F-A-V-R-I-L-E. And that means the type of glass it is which Louis Comfort Tiffany and Tiffany Studios made famous, known as Favril glass. It is glass that looks like early Roman glass. It's either very, very purple, very, very yellow, very, very green. Sometimes that blue-purple color. Yours is very, very golden or yellow with some purple elements as well. The best place you can see the purple is right in the bottom, okay? Gold or yellow and purple are complementary color pairs. They attract the optic nerve, which is why fine artists like Tiffany would put them together. So you purchased this. Did you purchase just one? Oh, that time we did, yeah. This time you did. That implies that you might have others. Okay. Is this the best piece in your Tiffany collection? Uh, I think so. You think so? You like it. What did you pay in, the in 1961? $25. $25 for this. For this piece right here. Yeah. By Louis Comfort Tiffany. Which is not a forged signature many of them are forged this one is not a forged signature and today this piece in my hand is worth twenty four hundred dollars that's a pretty good investment pretty good. not bad right where do you keep it and do you put stuff in it like you know your grandkids mints <laughs> no so nothing's been in this all those years no. and it's sitting in your beautiful obviously very very neat house because look at how white his shirt is <laughs> that house of yours has got to be neat right Gorgeous. $2,400, $2,500. It is marked on the bottom. They're oftentimes marked here, too. You can see it's marked on the bottom and also marked right here. If you have a true Tiffany, you'll have the mark on the lid as well as the base. So remember that for people who are looking for Tiffany pieces. The mark is here. This one says LCT, Louis Comfort Tiffany Fevril, and the same number indicating the time period, early 20th century for these. That's a nice one. That's a nice piece of glass. Tell me a little bit about this set that you've got here. That's a Lucretia. Set, a set passed down from my grandmother to my mother. Passed down from your grandmother to your mother. Yes. Okay. And that particular set you now have. Yes. Okay. And there are six plates, six bowls, six cups, six goblets, a cream and sugar, a large bowl, and a divided plate. Okay. So let's see what I've got. I'm going to try to make some room here and be careful. All right. I've got a creamer and a sugar, right? I've got this. This is your goblet? There's six of them. Six of those. I've got this. This is your cup. Yeah, six cups. Six cups. No, sir, no saucers? No. No sauce. Three saucers, but the other three. Okay. So I said no saucers, and you said no. Now we're saying there are three. Yes. Do you have any saucers? Three. Yes, but you're expecting to have six because you have six cups, but only three saucers. Right. Okay, because one of your brothers broke a saucer, or three. Twin brothers. I got twin brothers, so they both broke one, and then the other one they didn't fess up to. I got it. All right, and then you've got this. What's this for? Six bowls. Bowls. What are these bowls used for? Berries. Berries, thank you. Someone who knows about fruit. We don't eat fruit anymore. We eat fruit 
roll-ups, <laughs> Fruit Loops, but we don't eat fruit fruit, so fruit, okay? Fruit, so that's a fruit bowl. What's this for? This is your separated. What's this for? Um, relish tray. Relish tray, right? So you're gonna have, now we're moving into vegetables. We don't eat those either, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's what this is. And there's your plate. So tell me how many plates you got. Six plates. Okay, how many goblets? Goblet. Only one of these separated, yes. or relish dishes, yes. okay. You only have one of these bowls. Yes. You have six of these bowls. Yes. You have, we discussed this already, you've got six of these, but only three because of your brothers of the saucers. And then you've got this sugar bowl and this creamer. Sugar bowls are usually covered, right, for granulated sugar, but for sugar cubes, they're uncovered. Did you ever have a lid? So is it for granulated sugar, or is it for sugar cubes? Thank you. Okay. I'm somewhere smart. I'm in Dayton, so that helps me. All right. Is this depression glass? Different colors of depression glass are, in fact, more valuable or more marketable. We like pink. We like green. You have blue. You have other colors. Not as marketable. But this particular set is very, very, very popular. Now, we have this particular pattern that goes all the way around, and we've got it now. Was the family always right here in the Dayton, Ohio area? Yes. Always here. Yes. Could it be made here? No. Probably not made here. No. Probably made somewhere close by. Uh, West where, where would you think? Either West Virginia or Pittsburgh, typically, for these types of pieces. Value on the whole set, all of the set, all together, about $450 for all of it. Okay. I wish you had those three saucers, but you got two brothers anyway, so I guess that's a better deal. I don't know. <laughs> All right. How'd you acquire this? Same thing, my mother. Same thing, your mother. These are nice. These are blue. We like the blue. Look at this. See, I see this and I think of Jackie Kennedy. Before she was Onassis and the whole thing and on Fifth Avenue and all of that. When she was married to the president, Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy, I think of her. So it's the ladies who lunch in the 60s, right? The 50s and 60s. They have a little tea, a little sandwich, you know, they take the bread crusts off and they eat like a little bit of mayonnaise and a little bit of cucumber on white bread and they eat that. And then they drink this and it sits right here. So it's a luncheon plate. A lot of people will bring me this plate like this and go, oh, that's my plate. And I'm like, where's the cup? What cup? Isn't that for a cigarette? They did use that for a cigarette, too. They'd use it as an ashtray, but also as a saucer. Very, very typical in the 1960s. So it is, of course, um, molded, this particular glass, and then it has the gold banding, the gold rim. I'm walking around because I don't have my thing on my, on my head, <laughs> my loop. And this, of course, is famous Fire King. It is, of course, oven where and it's made right here in the United States. Fire King. Fire King is really popular in California. And you see a lot of people collecting it in California. You also see a lot of people collecting it in Asia. It is oven okay, it'll go, be okay if you put it in the oven. It'll be, so if you had a warm piece of pie and a cup of coffee and you wanted to put this in the oven and heat it all up, you could. So uh, Fire King and different colors of Fire King is actually very, very collectible. How many of these dishes with the cups do you have? And don't tell me that you have dishes without cups. And don't tell me you have cups without dishes. You've got to have them both. Have four cups and four dishes. There you go. That's my girl. All right. So you can have lunch for the bridge. Everybody's playing bridge. All four, you can have lunch. That's terrific. That set, four, blue, uh, gold banded from the 1960s. Your mother's? Yes. Also handed down. I'd say that set of four, you're going to get about $325 for that set of four. For Fire King. People are going, for Fire King? Yeah, it's really collectible. The market went crazy with the millennials who want to make things look like the 1960s. They love it. Most people will say, oh, my grandkids don't want anything. Did you ask your grandkids? And most people say, I didn't ask my grandkids. And all of a sudden, the grandkids are like, yeah, that's what I want. That's cool. So that is cool. Speaking of glass. Let's take a look at this. Jim, how did you acquire this piece? That's from your mother-in-law? Your mother-in-law gave you this dish? How did we break it? What happened? How did we break it? I mean, you could commit suicide off this thing. You slit your wrists right there. <laughs> oh. Wow, look at it. Jim, what happened? Did it fall? You don't know. So you got it this way or it happened? Oh, you got it this way. 
Okay, well then, yeah, okay. Um, so this particular, this glass you can see, you can see the white glass here, and then you can see the inlaid blue. So you can see the two glasses. Sometimes the damage actually helps us to do a little education, so that's not bad. This is a ruffled collar, just like on your shirt. It's a ruffled collar, right? And then you actually have some hand painting on the interior. It is unmarked, and you have some painting here on the exterior. I'm gonna watch my hands on this, because it's pretty sharp. You have some painting on the exterior as well. So this particular piece dates to about the 1930s, 1940s. Is that possible in your family history? Yeah. Okay. Value on this piece in this condition, about $15. In good condition, about $85. But you can't, it's very hard to put glass back together. <laughs> you don't have the pieces, right? Okay, well, thank you for bringing it. Great grandma gave you this. So there's this penny inside of this piece, and this penny's from England. Right, that's what said, the base came. She said the vase came from England, and that was the coin she brought over with it. The vase came from England, so this is a vase well, that's with a handle. <laughs> so you would pour it. I don't know, that's what they call it. All right, what do you call it? I just, it goes to my curio cabinet, it doesn't do anything. Goes in your curio cabinet, you're not using it to put anything in it and pour out of it, no. but it actually has, when you look inside, there's a little lip for a stopper, okay. which you may not have anymore. No. But you can see the lip inside, which would hold the stopper, okay. which was also glass. Okay. And the stopper glass is the same celadon color glass as you see here, okay? okay? So that's what you have here. This is called blown glass, and then this is fused. So this is, this is um, heated up and then allowed to anneal or cool down once it's attached in two places. This is called a decorated collar, and this, of course, is not a decorated collar, right? Because the top collar has no decoration. And this particular piece is painted and gilded. It's English, it dates to about 1900, and value on it is about $200. Okay. Very nice piece of glass. What, now, here's your penny, I'm gonna put it back here. Don't lose it, right? And then, this piece. So, would you trade that piece for this piece? You wouldn't because it's sentimental value, right? That's what most people say to me. No, no, Dr. Lori, I don't want to do that. Becky, how'd you acquire this? Pitcher with a silver pouring spout. How come this comes right off? From your mother-in-law's estate. Okay. This particular piece comes right off because there are people who couldn't afford this piece and would just have it like this, use it as a vase. Yours can actually be used also with a spout. This is silver plated. This particular piece has a mark on it, which we'd have to find, for the silver plating. And then they put a little bit of silicone and they just go like this, glue, and it would stay glued down like that. Time period for it, early 20th century, 1900 or so, circa 1900. It is pressed glass or molded glass. It is not sharp here, okay? That would be cut glass, okay? This particular piece, very nicely done, very nice and clear, value on it about $75. And this by far is the winner of the three glass pieces. You're thinking, really? Doesn't size matter, Dr. Lurie? Sure. Where's John? John, how'd you acquire this? It's nice. This particular piece is a very nice piece of glass, which is iridescent here, hand molded, hand blown, hand applied. Applied ornament. This is a vase. It doesn't have a ruffled collar. It too once had a metal collar on top of it. This particular piece dates to about 1900 to 1920 and value on that's about $200. That's a nice piece as well. Do you have its mate? Do you have its mate? No. Okay. Do you have siblings who might have its mate? They might. They might. Ask them if they have the mate. That's a very nice piece. 